All right, man, peace. So, brothers, in one of Shakespeare's plays, I believe it was Twelfth Night, he had a certain character utter a line where the character stated, Some men are born great, some men achieve greatness, and some men have greatness thrust upon them. Well, certain men have a mixture of the two, or even all three. And I believe that Anthony Davis is one of those men who was born great, he's going to achieve greatness, and he's going to have greatness thrust upon him because he's going to be put in a situation this season that he's not going to be able to run from. He's not going to be able to hide behind veterans or any other great or borderline great players. It's all going to be thrust upon his shoulders. And I think that it's going to bring out the best in him. That pressure is going to make him a diamond. And I think that it's also going to reveal certain realities that he may not want to have revealed. That being that maybe he was not as close or as cool with Boogie Cousins as he tried to act like he was. Or even Rondo. Because I have a hard time believing that both those players would not have been re-signed by the New Orleans Pelicans unless he was on board with the front office of the Pelicans to not bring them back. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Woo! Anthony Davis looks good. He will be joining us here on the show in just a moment. Before he gets here, I just want to talk to you guys about the Pelicans' offseason. Huge changes on that team in the last six months, both at the end of the season and then in the summer. What do you think of the moves they made? Well, first off... Uh, if I think that the moves were good moves if Anthony Davis co-signed on them. I think that he's ready to go to the next step. I believe that last season was the first season where he started to finally approach a lot of the prognostications that the media have been lavishing him with. I think that he's been a bit over-esteemed and overrated prior to last season where he finally showed that he could elevate his team in the playoffs. And that to me is the only time that you can truly start to call a player great. Some players can have great potential. But it's not until they start to impact the playoffs where you say to yourself, okay, this player is truly great. And Anthony Davis has had injury issues in the past. But once again, I think that a truly great player is able to win a playoff round or two as long as the opposing team is somewhere near the level of his team. For a midseason trade, it's and I, I haven't researched it deeply, but I got to say that midseason trade where they traded for Miritich and also moved Omer Sheep, which freed up their mm -hmm. spending. Yeah. One of the best midseason trades in years. I agree. Um, tr triggered the door open for their second half run. Uh, I thought it was terrific. Uh, you know, and that was a bold decision in that time. everybody else was waiting for the market to settle. It was what five or six days also, before the deadline, Mirotic and they just jumped in did there. Not exactly have a great first half. Yeah. They evaluated him as a guy. Well, who fit. but they had all they had issues fitting those two centers together, and that's why I say that I don't believe that Anthony Davis and Boogie Cousins were as close as they were trying to act like they were through the media. And also, he had all sorts of stuff going on, too. But just because he got punched in the face? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's fair, but he um, was... But yes. Well, Miritich changed their team. What Miritich did was, when you put him on the Pelicans, you no longer needed Boogie Cousins. Absolutely, because Miritich could stretch the floor, he could guard better than people think he can guard, and he also rebounds better than people think he rebounds. Because you could spread the floor, you could play at a faster pace. Look at, you move Anthony Davis back to center. Look at Davis's numbers before and after. Look at the numbers with Cousins on the court versus off the court. He, because Miritich did what he did, it made it possible for them to play a certain way and to move on without Boogie once he turned down that two-year extension that they offered. Absolutely. Well, we have five-time All-Star Anthony Davis joining us. Thank you so much, AD. We love it when you come by. For a while, I was hoping that by some magical, mystical methodology that the Boston Celtics would be able to trade for Anthony Davis, but it's becoming more and more apparent that that trade is never going to happen. And I want to say you're in Los Angeles for the 10,000-mile pit stop of the Mobile One Annual Protection 20,000-mile road trip. So this is like a whole 20,000-mile real-world demonstration uh, 20, that the miles. can of Mobile One, right? 20,000 miles. There yeah, you go. You know, Are you doing all 20,000 miles? The car right here. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just make sure no, no one makes no, you walk no, the 20,000 no. miles. That, that's not okay. You're right. He need to have 20,000 waxings done on that furry shit growing in between his eyebrows. That's what he need. They need to pour some Mobile One right on that tuft of hair in between his eyebrows and light a match. Right. I'll be walking for him. Exactly. Right. <laughs> it's nice to see you. We were just discussing a crazy season, monster season for you, finishing as a finalist for, oh, by the way, both the MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. 
and I think that he's also going to be a finalist for the MVP for this up and coming season. Many people are prognosticating LeBron James to win the MVP. I think that Anthony Davis has to be considered the front runner. And number two would probably be Mr. Kawhi Leonard. So we have a little question for you here on the jump. Which award are you more interested in winning? If you could win only one, which one do you want to win more? Um. You should say both because that would put you in very rare company. I believe that only Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon are the only two players to have won the MVP and the Defensive Player of the Year in the same season. LeBron James should have received the Defensive Player of the Year along with his MVP in 2013, but it is what it is. To me, uh, probably MVP. Um, I think it holds a little bit more weight. Um, but at the same time, Defensive Player of the Year, you know, means a lot as well. Um, you should have just said both, brother. Don't limit yourself. Um, and, you know, that's one of my... One of my goals I want to want to get for sure is the defensive player of the year. But uh, for me, I think MVP. Um, if I had to choose between the two. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to say I can hear the sirens. They're coming for you with the speed. People are driving that car behind you. But we, we won't we won't rat you out. We won't tell them where you are. Um, and look, we we had some video here at the gym. And by the way, I asked that question because I know how serious you are about your defense. A lot of people would think that question is a no brainer, but for you, I know that it's not. And it's hard to ask an MVP yeah, exactly. finalist how he can improve. But we were showing video of you uh, working on your handles in sunglasses. Well, what, what, is, what, what are you doing to improve this summer? Because it... All that's cool, but that's exactly what he does not need to be spending an extraordinary amount of time on. He should be working with Akeem Olajuwon. Because then also, like, are the shades prescription? Yeah. I need to know more about the shades. Yeah, so everybody was kind of killing me for that, but they understand. So I was... Uh... I had something going on with, with my right eye where this, uh, I was sensitive to light, so I couldn't really see. Um, the only way that helped was sunglasses. I didn't have my contact in or anything, so um, that's the only way that it helped was putting the sunglasses on so um, I can work out. And I wasn't trying to skip a day of working out, so uh, I threw the <laughs> glasses on to kind of help with the light sensitivity, and uh, it was working. So, um, But everybody thought I was you know, Hollywood or something like that. But I was going to say. Really know the true story. <laughs> You, you look like good. I, I would have leaned into it if I were you and said it was a whole technique. Yeah. You were, you know, putting blinders on so you could really focus, all of that stuff. <laughs> Next time this happens, come right. to me. We will concoct a whole story for you, I promise. We'll make, we'll make you look good. Um, oh, I bet you will, Rachel Nichols. Hey, brothers, keep in mind, a lot of truth is said in jest. She said, come to me, we'll concoct a whole story. Many of these members of the mainstream liberal sports media, they take these athletes aside and they help them concoct these narratives to broaden their mass exposure to the public and to heighten their appeal. Why do you think LeBron James loves to give exclusive interviews to Miss Rachel Nichols? Um, I do want to talk to you about the Western Conference okay, because okay. it has changed so much. LeBron James is now in the West. You've got the Warriors that added Boogie. You've got the Thunder. You've got the Rockets. You've got the Jazz. What do you think of the challenges that the West will present with you guys every single night? Just like Kevin Durant told C.J. McCollum, he should not be concerned with the Warriors. The Warriors are a couple of levels above Anthony Davis and his squad. Anthony Davis needs to be concerned with the OKC Thunder, with the Utah Jazz, with the LA Lakers. Those are teams that if the New Orleans Pelicans are playing at optimal levels, they could possibly defeat those teams in a seven game series. Don't sleep on the Pelicans. They added Julius Randle who's going to give them a lot of depth both at center and power forward. They're going to move Drew Holiday back over to point guard. I think that they're going to be very potent this season as a second-tier Western Conference team. Oh, yeah, it just got a lot tougher. Uh, with all the moves that happened uh, this summer, it's just going to make the West a lot tougher. Um, make it a lot harder to get in the playoffs. Every game already matters, but it's going to mean a lot more now. Um, it's going to be more exciting, more fun. Uh, I'm excited for a challenge. You know. Yeah, you look excited, brother. You look so excited you're about to pass out and fall asleep. Um, you know, everybody... I remember reading this article where I think we were ninth in the preceding, you know, top ten teams, and then uh, I think when Demarcus went to the Warriors and LeBron went to the Lakers and all that stuff happened. We, <laughs> I don't know where we are now. I know we're not top right. ten, so it's just gonna be a, it's just gonna be a, it's gonna be a challenge for us. It's gonna be a challenge for me, and uh, it's gonna be a fun challenge. Cause, um, well, you're saying that now. Let's see how you feel out around the All Star break if the New Orleans Pelicans are somewhere around 22 and 25. Um, I know one thing about myself and uh, the guys that were there last year that 
um, we love challenges. We're going to accept, uh, take it on, take it head on, and um, try to fight our way into the playoffs and make bigger noise than we did last year. You are a transcendent player, though. There's no doubt about that. That's why I state, do not sleep on the Pelicans. I think that Anthony Davis is going to head into this up and coming regular season as the front runner to win the NBA MVP award, along with Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, Giannis Antetokounmpo, of course, LeBron as well. All of those names you can throw into the hat, and I believe that one of them is going to be next season's NBA MVP. I remember telling many people years ago in 2013 when LeBron James won that MVP and then 2014 they gave it to KD. I stated that the NBA does not want to give any more MVP awards to LeBron James if they can help it because they don't want that aspect of the MVP to be anything like it was in the 90s where people believed that if Michael Jordan didn't win it, it was because the NBA just wanted to spread it around. They wanted to build up their younger players and they did not want the league to appear to be a LeBron James league. They wanted to make sure that they marketed all their other stars appropriately and fortunately for the NBA, they have enough high level talent that they can give MVP awards to a Steph Curry, to a Russell Westbrook, to a James Hardhead, and people not look at it as being agenda driven, fortunately for them. You guys are a different team too, right? I mean, I sat with you guys this spring, the chemistry on your team was yeah. so good. I know how tight- Allegedly. Tight you were, especially with your Kentucky guys. You and Boogie really close, you were- Allegedly. Rondo really close. Allegedly. Close, you got one Kentucky guy back in there with Julius Randle. Where are you in, on all the team's moves in this offseason? Once again, I have a very hard time believing that Anthony Davis, being one of the top three to top five players in the NBA, depending on who's making the list, will go to his front office in New Orleans and tell them, there's no way that you can get rid of Rajon Rondo or DeMarcus Cousins. And they would tell Anthony Davis, get over it. Take your ass back down to the locker room and mind your business. I'm just not buying it. Not in 2018. Now in 1990, Jerry Krause would have told Michael Jordan that. But in 2018, no, they're not telling any top flight NBA superstars to mind their business, not anymore. Yeah, um, like I said, a lot of these guys do the, the best thing for them in their careers. Um, the best thing for them in their careers, DeMarcus Cousins could not get any team to sign him. What are you talking about, Anthony Davis? I understand it's a bitch, but we also got two guys that came in, uh, Julius and Alfred, and we signed uh, Ian back. Um, so I'm excited for our, our team, excited for our season that's coming up. And, um, I do agree that Julius Randle, I think, is going to be a great pickup for them. He'll probably get anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes a game just in backing up Anthony Davis and Miritich. Um, like I said, we're going to take all these challenges head on. You know, everyone's counting us out the same way they did last year. Um, you know, we're trying to get the same results. Well, actually, better results than we did last year. Um, you guys should be happy to get the same results that you got last year. If you could win a first-round matchup, that's a great season for you guys. I just proved everyone wrong. So, Anthony, when Boogie went down, you had brought in Miritich at the trade deadline, and it seemed to me that he really opened up some space for you. You started playing very, very fast. You went back to the center spot. I wonder, looking forward, you're going to have a full year with him now. What are you expecting? Oh, uh, the same thing. You know, Nico is definitely a great player. He can shoot the ball. Um, he's physical. He's tough. Uh, he rebounds a lot better than I thought he did. Um, he defends, so I'm excited. I'm not sure why people are so surprised at how well Meritich defends coming from Chicago and that lineage. Those guys have been defending since Thibodeau was there. I'm excited to have him, uh, you know, for a full year with us. Um, like I said, like, well, like you said, he's able to place the floor for us and, um, you know, I'm able to go back to some center and play down there uh, in a low post area uh, with a lot more freedom. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited. That's a little shot at Cousins. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about him. Uh, now he gets a chance to you know, come into training camp and we get the chance to start early um, to get that uh, camaraderie even more uh, tight than it was last year. Anthony, you guys obviously played tremendously recovering from Boogie's injury last year. You guys were great in the playoffs. Holiday was great. So I just want to ask you, I under totally understand why the team did what they did, but is this a situation when the team made its decision on Boogie that they would come to you um, and, and check with you on that? Good question, Brian Windhorse. Yeah, um, and they did. It was a lot, a lot. It's a lot of different stories out there. Um, but for me, um, you know, it's nothing we can do about it now. I just move forward and 
truck. Right, but what does that really even mean? Ryan Windhorst asked you if the front office came to you to check with you about the DeMarcus Cousins issue, and you're saying that we're moving forward. What does that mean? That means that you don't want to say on national TV that you told the front office they could get rid of him because as I've stated and as Brian Windhorst obviously recognizes, there's no way that they would not resign Boogie Cousins unless you had told them to cut him loose. Let me rewind this back. Tremendously recovering from Boogie's injury last year. You guys were great in the playoffs. Holiday was great. So I just want to ask you, I under totally understand why the team did what they did, but is this a situation when the team made its decision on Boogie that they would come to you um, and, and check with you on that? Yeah, um, and they did. It was a lot, a lot, it's a lot of different stories out there. Um. Right, but what story could it possibly be if they came and checked with you? You must have given them the green light to get rid of him. Because if they were just going to get rid of him anyway, they wouldn't have bothered to check with you. Obviously, you were the deciding vote, Anthony Davis. And I have no problem with that. Boogie Cousins seems to me like an annoyance in the locker room. Especially if you don't have a strong culture like the Golden State Warriors. If you have a young or easily influenced locker room culture, Boogie Cousins is going to be a major tumor, potentially. I have no doubt about that. It's obvious that Anthony Davis is not ready to get on television and say, yes, I told him that they can get rid of Boogie Cousins. Um, but for me, um, no, it's not we can do about it now. I just move forward and try to worry about the team that we have now. Uh, you can't dwell on, you know, whether um, you should have came back or, you know, Rondo, whoever it is. So you just got to move forward with the team. Like Ain't nobody asked you about Rondo. They asked you about Boogie Cousins. But since you brought up Rondo, it's clear you didn't want Rondo back either. <laughs> and I have now and try to find a way uh, to uh, make the playoffs as well and, and make some noise. So, um, of course, it was tough, but at the same time, you know, I'm past it. Um, it's not, like I said, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, the team kept me in the loop, um, and, you know, whatever happened on their end um, happened on, on both sides. Um, and now we're here. So, um, you know, like I said, we just got to move forward and uh, try to figure out this, uh, how we can be successful with the team we got now. It's okay, brother. You wanted them out, they out. It's your team now. You got your team back. Now just take your game to the next level. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad to hear you're not driving all 20,000 miles. I was concerned. But if you do, please wear the shades. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> yeah, I know you was concerned. Anthony Davis is probably the last piece of Mandingo that you haven't sampled in the NBA. For Team USA. It's true. Yeah. Hey, Las Vegas, right down the road. Uh, Brian, we'll see you there, and uh, right. we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. We usually do a distant replay right. on this show, um, but this date, of course, there's no NBA basketball being played. So to, in honor of AD, we are doing a distant replay from his rookie season, 2012. Please enjoy. Tied at 65. He's a great natural athlete. It's good to see that. It seems as though he's moving past a lot of his injury issues as he's worked on his body. So good for the brother. Okay, so now this is another segment pertaining to Mr. Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Boogie Cousins. So anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. How quickly things can change. A little over a year ago, Anthony Davis was welcoming DeMarcus Cousins as his new teammate. Now, Boogie's in Golden State, and Davis's mood has changed. AD told Complex... Now he's the enemy. Anybody who's not on the Pelicans is an enemy to me. He went from a teammate to an enemy. I mean now look at that. It doesn't say he went from my friend to my enemy on another team. It says he went from a teammate to my enemy. So it seems as though Anthony Davis was trying to make the best of a bad situation, having to work with the Marcus Cousins. I mean, what do you make of AD's comments? I'm going to say it like the great 21st century philosopher Kevin Durant said. Don't concern yourself with stuff that's happening at the time. <laughs> right? Like, that's not that. I feel you on that, Amin El Hassan, but I do not believe that that is what Anthony Davis was pertaining to. I think that he was speaking on the change in dynamic in regards to the rapport that they had when they were teammates as opposed to the rapport that they have now. I don't think that DeMarcus Cousins has a problem with Anthony Davis referring to him as an enemy because they may have been enemies in the locker room. Who the hell knows? When I read that quote... And it states that Boogie Cousins has gone from a teammate to an enemy. That's not something that you say about someone that you were extremely close with as a Kentucky brother, 
allegedly. That's cute. Okay, he's the enemy. It doesn't make a difference. You're not going to beat them. You're not going to be in their caliber of conversation. You should be worried about making the playoffs. For sure, which they, because if you had... I think that they're going to make the playoffs as long as Anthony Davis plays 75 plus games. You had to pick one team in the West to be out that was in last year. It's them, right? They got... They also, Portland. Do not sleep on Portland falling out of the playoffs. I'm telling you, that team reminds me a lot of the Toronto Raptors had the Toronto Raptors not made any changes. And I think that Toronto would have made the playoffs in the East no matter what. If they would have made no changes, if they would have kept Dwayne Casey and kept DeMar DeRozan, they still would have made the playoffs, but the feeling around the team would have been so different. Because this is a team that has been demolished by LeBron James psychologically. They had to make a change for their fan base. I think that Portland is coming into this season feeling as though we've made no changes. We only won 49 games last year. We got swept in the first round by the New Orleans Pelicans. And now LeBron James is coming to our conference. We have no chance of winning a championship. And I think that Damian Lillard is going to become depressed as the season goes along, especially as he sees that there are going to be at least six or seven teams that will be quantifiably better than his team. I think that Utah is going to be far better than Portland, OKC, of course, the Rockets and the Warriors. I believe the Lakers are going to be better than them. New Orleans is going to be better than them. That's just off the top of my head. They've got some work to do. They're, and, but they, they, they were pretty good when Boogie Cousins got hurt and Anthony Davis took over and they and they kind of restructured. They, they, there's some hope there. And Joe Holiday really they're, they're, had a yeah. great second half. But and I, I like the mindset, though. The mind, that's a good okay. concept to take. Let me say this also. I believe that Denver is going to be better this year. I think that Phoenix is going to win more games this year. Once again, it would not shock me if Portland does not make the playoffs. Hey, all right. No, I like it. It's old school. No, it's old, but I'm, I'm just saying it's just like, I, I, okay, he's your enemy. All right, cool. They're going to beat you by 30. Yeah. They're going to sweep you to see each other so in the what playoffs. Once again, I mean, I don't believe that he was speaking so much about the rivalry between the teams. He was speaking about the rivalry between him and DeMarcus Cousins. Nothing. Just yeah. that, I, I mean, no, was, that's not fun either. Was the best. It was fun, no. it was fun him being on my team. Yeah. I know we're going to. No, like, you know, and, and he come back from an injury. I just hope he can become the player that he once was. Well, he probably did say some of that too, probably. but this is the juicy stuff that yeah. we wanted to talk about. <laughs> but, but, like, I mean, you ripped ooh. Kareem for being nuanced earlier. Yeah, no. I mean, what the hell? No. Pick a side, no, man. No, this is what I do. Just, whatever you say. You're like a walking contrarian. You said LeBron's not going to go to the playoffs. I, I didn't say that. I, I, I didn't. I mean, you didn't. Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Did I say but it? You're kind of Did I say it? I mean, I just said it. You can tell a means from New York. He just likes to debate and argue every damn body. I mean, with your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Your mates. <laughs> you want, roll the tape. Did my eyes say it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. this just but anyway, that's basically it on the Anthony Davis storyline in this offseason. Once again, the NBA has become filled with so much intrigue due to the mobility of the players. And I think that that's a great thing for the league. The NBA hot stove portion of the year has become as interesting damn near as the playoffs. But anyway, peace.